could be given by Emmanuel Proof, and it's about how machine learning can be used to assess security of RSA. Floor is yours, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, the, the work I'm going to present you uh, now is a joint work with, uh, between, between ANSI, so the French uh, National uh, Agency for Security, and uh, three, uh, the three main uh, evaluation labs, uh, security evaluation lab in uh, uh, hardware uh, in France, so namely the CIA, uh, Thales, and, uh, and CERMA. And uh, so this is joint works with uh, between me and uh, and uh, and uh, the experts and uh, several experts of the uh, of those labs. Uh, let let me let me start with a few words about the the context of the study and uh, also uh, um, a very general overview of the of the um, of the target we have used uh, to 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 do the test. Uh, first, about the, the context. So ANSI uh, asked the three hardware security evaluation labs. In France, to test the, application, the applicability of um, deep learning attacks against secure ASA implementations in a quite, uh, I would say, practical uh, context, so meaning against uh, a quite uh, reasonable target. So, for that, we, we asked uh, another company, uh, which is well known, Crypto Expert, to develop uh, an RSA implementation, including the classical countermeasures on uh, a quite well secure platform. So the implementation of the RSA we are going to attack has been developed by crypto, uh, crypto experts. The hardware uh, on which the software uh, implementation has been, has been, uh, has been loaded uh, include, uh, includes a Montgomery uh, arithmetic coprocessor. And uh, the evaluations performed by the labs uh, should include uh, in horizontal attacks, which have been, uh, which have been discussed uh, uh, this morning, and also, of course, machine learning techniques. But today, I, I'm, I am only going to, 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 to discuss about the deep learning aspects of the study uh, which has been done by, by the labs. So when it comes to implement an RSA uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a smart card device, for instance, we have typical countermeasures we are going to, to, to develop uh, as a developer. So um, most of the time the exponentiation is done at software level, so CPU, and uh, it involves, uh, ac it, it involves uh, a Montgomery accelerator, so an, an hardware coprocessor to efficiently process the arithmetic operations. Um, to deal with the classical, main, uh, so the classical physical attacks, uh, we have some countermeasures which are classically developed and uh, which have been developed in the, con in, in the context of the study by, by, by um, crypto experts. So, for instance, for simple power analysis uh, introduced by Kosher in 96, uh, we have to, 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 to develop the exponentiation so that, so that the execution flow uh, is independent of the pri private exponent. Uh, well, which is quite classical, so you can, for instance, use a uh, uh, square uh, and multiply always uh, uh, exponentiation algorithm. To defeat uh, chosen, message chosen message attacks, for instance, uh, uh, attacks uh, uh, requ um, asking for the signature of uh, minus one, the message mi minus one, we classically, we, we, we ask to blind the message. So it allows to defeat uh, the, the attack proposed by Yen in 2001 and also uh, extended by Fook and Valet in 2003. So essentially it consists in adding uh, a, a random multiple uh, uh, of, the, of the modulus to the message and uh, in order to ensure that uh, the, the this, uh, this uh, random mask is not removed at the first step of the exponentiation, we have also to extend to extend the, 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 the public modulus, so n, and to multiply it by r prime. Essentially, r prime will be, uh, uh, will be a, a random of uh, 32 bits or 64 bits, something like that. 
Uh, to defeat DP, DPA-like attacks uh, and statistical attacks, it is very classical to use exponent blinding and uh, essentially it just consists uh, in adding a multiple of, uh, of uh, the alert the alert of the modulus to, uh, to the exponent before the exponentiation. Uh, um, usually, usually you, do you, um, essentially, you, you, you should also consider other attacks, which are quite classical in our context. Both attacks are the address bit DPA attack and the horizontal attacks. But it's, it appears sometimes that both attacks are not considered uh, during the development phase because both attacks are considered are considered less practical than the other ones. So, meaning that it appears sometimes that there are no countermeasures against both attacks. And this is exactly the case uh, of the implementation which has been done by, by crypto experts. So, by purpose, crypto experts chose to not consider address bit DP attack and horizontal attack. So, Let's, let's, let, let me say a few words about uh, the hardware specification. So, uh, the, uh, as I said, uh, the exponentiation uh, has, been, uh, has been developed for, for specific hardware, and uh, I cannot tell you all the details about this, uh, this hardware. Uh, I'm not allowed to, to, to give the, the name of the, of the device, but uh, let us call Boombo in, in here. But uh, during, the, during the evaluation, one of the lab uh, uh, made the, the following picture of the, of the device after the packaging. And you can, uh, you can see, you, know, you, you can see uh, almost nothing, <laughs> of course. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's too basic as a picture, but uh, yeah, believe me, there, there is a, a, an arithmetic coprocessor. And what is nice also, uh, we, we discovered that after the fact, uh, is that this, uh, this hardware has been, uh, has been certified, not in Europe, but in Asia. Meaning that it is not a very defensive uh, hardware, uh, and uh, maybe uh, the crypto expert does, does not follow the recommendations of the, of the hardware developer uh, when implementing the, the exponentiation, but it is not a basic uh, arithmetic coprocessor, it is a defensive, uh, defensive uh, uh, arithmetic coprocessor. So when we de delivered uh, the smart cards to the evaluation labs, we provided them uh, with a, a very minimal uh, operating system, enabling them to, uh, to execute the RSA uh, through a very simple uh, API, so which, is, uh, which is given in the slide. But essentially what you have to remember is that uh, the RSA implementation includes three uh, types of uh, countermeasures. So first, the blinding of the message, then the blinding of the exponent, and uh, fi finally, the blinding, the blinding of, the, of, the, um, of the modulus. And all the, all the, all the, all the random uh, used, uh, all the random values used for the blinding are, are 64 bits long. Okay. Just to finish the presentation of the context, uh, I have to, to say you, to tell you a few, few words about the, uh, how we, we use a coprocessor, uh, such a coprocessor, such an arithmetic coprocessor uh, uh, usually. Uh, when, you, when you are going to, when, when you need to, to perform, for instance, multiplication and or squaring during the, um, during the exponentiation, uh, you, will, uh, you will use, you will make use of uh, what we what we can call uh, arithmetic uh, Montgomery uh, uh, Montgomery multiplication uh, module, and to use this module, you are going to use to, to first you are going to load uh, in the memory uh, in, in the memory of the coprocessor uh, the values on which you want to operate uh, the, the exponentiation, and uh, also maybe you are going to preprocess some Mongo what we call some Montgomery constants. And then when, when you need to do, uh, for instance, a multiplication between two intermediate values during the processing, uh, instead of, of giving the values themselves, you are going to give uh, an index, the index of the two values you want to multiply, and the index of the, 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 the location of the coprocessor memory where you want the result to be, to be stored. So essentially, this means, in my example, that if you want to perform the, the, the multiplication between the value in, the, in segment one with the value of segment two and store it uh, 
in, uh, in, the, in segment four, then you are just going to, have to call the Montgomery uh, multiplication module with Z index one, then the index, the index two, and at, at the end, the index four, okay? So for the, for the exponentiation uh, algorithm uh, uh, developed uh, by, by, by crypto expert, uh, I just can say that it's, very, it's a very basic one. Uh, this is a regular ex uh, exponenti uh, exponentiation uh, uh, algorithm, so square and multiply always. And what is important here is to notice that before calling the modular multiplication module, so for the squaring or for the multiplication, there is a step each time, just, which is just here to uh, decide which part of the, of the, of the coprocessor memory I'm going to use for the multiplication. So which segment of the, of the coprocessor memory I'm going to, uh, uh, to multiply it and where I'm going to, uh, to load the result, to store the result. So this is, this, is, uh, this is very important because it is well known that if you are doing that, there is a, an attack pass, which is uh, usually called the, an address DDPA, and which, which, uh, just, which is just using the fact that there is a direct relation between the, uh, the sequence of the, of the, the registers which are used, uh, which are manipulated during the square and multiply always algorithm, and the value of, uh, of the exponent. Let us just uh, look at uh, an example. Uh, so here, uh, the, values, uh, the values of um, the exponent bits are 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. So they are, they are blinded. This is a blinded exponent, uh, exponent. but uh, my purpose is to perform an attack in one trace. So if I recover the blinded, the blinded exponent, uh, I, I'm going to recover, in fact, a valid uh, secret exponent because this is just something which is equal to the good exponent uh, modulo or uh, the Euler torsion. So if we look at uh, the, the values taken by the, in, uh, by the index segments during the exponentiation, we see that if the, the segment value for the, for the square at, at step i of the exponentiation is equal to the value of the segment used for the, follow the subsequent squaring, uh, then the exponent is one. So it's very simple, you can, you can validate that uh, by hand. If we see that there are, okay, <laughs> if we see that there are two, uh, two, um, two equal segment value, then we, see, we, not, we, we can observe that the, the, the exponent value is one. Uh, there is also another, another attack pass which is very classical, uh, which just using the fact that there, there will be collisions between two operands the, the operands used, the operand used for the, for the squaring at step i, and the first operand used at, for the multiplication, uh, for the multiplication uh, during the, second, the, the, the next iteration of the loop. So this means that if you, if you are able to, to recover the, the index values, you can recover, you have one attack pass which gives you the values of the, of the bits, the exponent bit, and we have another attack, which is a collision attack or an horizontal attack, which just requires that we are able to, uh, to uh, detect when two operands are equal. Okay, so to uh, perform the attacks, uh, the labs um, um, perform two campaigns, one, in the, one for the power conception, one for the electromagnetic emanation. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, because of time constraint, I'm just going to speak about the electromagnetic uh, uh, electromagnetic measurements campaign. So here we have a signal acquired, uh, acquired at, uh, at around uh, 2.5 uh, two uh, giga, giga sample per second. So this is a very high sampling rate, quite classical for electromagnetic analysis. And uh, so each trace we are going to use is composed of one or five million uh, samples. And if this is just corresponding to the, to the seven first um, most significant, significant bits of, uh, of the exponent. And if we look, if we zoom at, uh, at, at one of the, of the, of the step, we see that there, there is, a, so this is a one, it, one, uh, one iteration of the loop, and we see that there is two Montgomery multiplication. One is for the squaring, and the second one is for the multiplication. And before those steps, we see that there is a small steps in red, and these steps is just dedicated to the processing of the index. And this is where we are going to attack, because this is where the, indis the indices of the, of the of the Montgomery uh, multiplication module uh, are, are processed. 
Um, once we, once you have the, once you have the, the leakage, uh, the leakage, can, the leakage, uh, once you have the, your traces and you assume that they are quite good because there is no desynchronization, and this is the case uh, uh, as you have seen in the previous slide. The second step you you want to perform as an evaluator is to 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 validate there is there is information. So essentially, is there a dependency between what I am observing, so the trace and the and the, the value I want to extract, meaning here the index of the of the of the, of the register I'm using for the modu modular multiplication. So here I'm just taking the 32, uh, the 30, the 30,000 uh, first samples during, uh, during uh, a Montgomery multiplication uh, uh, by the coprocessor. So this is where the indices are, are uh, assumed to be, to, be, uh, to, be, to be manipulated. And I am just uh, processing a SNR and I see in, indeed that there is an information here. There are many places where we see information that information is leaking. We can do the same for the value of, so not for the values of the index, but for the values of the operands. And we see that indeed, there is also a, a very huge leakage of the information during the manipulation of, uh, of the operand by the, the, the Montgomery module. So this is nice. We see that there is information. So now the question is how to exploit it. So how to exploit it? I, I'm, I'm not going to go back to what has been said by my colleagues. Uh, uh, there are many techniques available, and today what we want to use uh, more and more is deep learning techniques. So here, uh, I'm just going to focus on, on, the, on the results. Uh, okay, I don't, don't have time to, to detail more than that. So first, just for comparison, we, we tested template, classical template attacks, and uh, what, is, what is important to notice here is that we just, so for the, for the recovery of the index values, we just, uh, extracted, we just extracted very few points, because to perform template attacks, we need very, very small traces. So we extracted very few points, and we computed the, the success rate to recover one bit of index for each Montgomery multiplication. And what we see is that we, we get around 80% uh, of success rate to recover one bit. If we do that with MLP, uh, with a well-chosen architecture, I'm not going to enter into the details, but if we use an MLP and now you don't need to, to extract uh, points of interest, you give the full trace, meaning the, the 30,000 uh, uh, points for the analysis, and then you observe that you have around uh, 90, uh, 98, 98% uh, of success rate to recover one bit for each Montgomery multiplication. So you recover quite, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, very precisely the, the exponent bits. And if you do that with a CNN, it's even better. You, you, are, you, you have a success rate of 90, 99% around. Um, I just can say that uh, the, same, the same analysis have been done on the program consumption uh, campaign, and uh, in, this, in this context, uh, the lab also tested other machine learning techniques. But we, as you can say, as you can see, uh, the techniques based on multilinear uh, perceptron and uh, based on convolutional neural networks uh, work, work better. Uh, for, the, for the attacks targeting the, op the values of the operands, we have uh, quite similar results. Uh, I'm going to go fast, but just to, re to, 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 to conclude, we, with template attacks where we extract exactly the points of interest, meaning that we simplify the problem a lot, we have a success rate to recover uh, the, the values, the value uh, of, uh, of the operand uh, uh, around, at, uh, which, is a, uh, which is equal to around 93%, while when we are going to use uh, a CNN, we are going to, to get a success rate of 90, uh, 97%. And so something I have to say is that it is very important, especially for the exponent bit, to, to, to recover each exponent bit with a very precise accuracy, because if you recover, for instance, uh, each bit with probability 0 0.9, which is good for one bit, at the end, if you want to recover 1,000 bits of the exponent, you, you will not succeed. So it's very important to have something which is as close as possible to one, meaning that you want a perfect recovery of each bit, which is almost the case here. So to conclude uh, about this work, and uh, you can find many, many, much more details in the paper, especially the, the, the models which have been used and, uh, and the strategy which have been used to, to train the models. But to conclude about, uh, about this work, I, I can say that 
for us, uh, so this is the position of at Atensi. We think that deep learning may be very efficient against uh, secure RSM, RSA implementations, but not only RSA implementations, also elliptic curve uh, um, uh, cryptography, and also maybe GCD uh, imp uh, processing, or all processings which are very, which take a lot of time, when where the, the information is small and hidden in a lot of uh, time samples. Uh, what is important also to, 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 to get from the presentation is that the selection of point of interest is less important uh, for, for deep learning te techniques than for template attacks. Deep learning techniques uh, currently used uh, are very basic, as, as also said by my, my, my colleagues previously, and, uh, and we think that attacks can be greatly improved. We are just, uh, uh, I would say, implementing the first chapters of the books uh, dealing with deep learning. And uh, the reported tests are for toy implementation. Uh, so this is an RSA evaluated in, a, in CC. Uh, so we think that, of course, RSA implementations evaluated by, uh, by, by labs and developed by, uh, by uh, I would say, uh, the, 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 good, uh, the good companies uh, in, in the field uh, should resist more than, uh, than this implementation to deep learning techniques. But uh, I would say, take care. Thank you, and uh, yeah, if you have questions, uh, but <laughs> we don't have time, I think. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, that was a wonderful talk. Unfortunately, we have to uh, just uh, no stick problem. to the um, timeline, but uh, I have learned a lot. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to take questions, but I encourage you to take it offline and talk to Emmanuel if you have any question regarding this nice study done by his team. Uh, please join me to thank all the speakers of this session. And that's it um, for this uh, machine learning uh, session. Thank you for all of your attention. Thank you.